Okay, so now we move into the more easy stage of the drawing process, which is the shading. So I'm saying that it's easy because you don't have to worry about perspective. All it is is filling in the darks and the midtones and the lights. So I'm going to that tree shape first and filling that in because that is the a really big shape there. And then I'm going into the windows. So I've posted a picture of the reference right alongside mine and I deliberately put it in black and white. So you can see that the windows are darker than the siding on the house or the front wall of the house there. Moving to the right side, the windows are even darker because they're in shadow. So I want to be able to point that out to you. And I always start off a little bit lighter than I think I will need to go, like on the a tree that's behind the house on the left side that I already shaded in. I'm going to have to go darker. You can tell from the photograph that it'll eventually have to go darker, but that's okay. So now I'm working on the opposite side. So this is the um, opposite wall here, and that is going to be darker on those windows. You can see it up there. There's also a interesting shadow shape. So there's like a little shadow there and then there's this interesting shadow that cuts across the side of the building. You want to make sure you include that too. And just remember when you're doing a building, what it really is, is a block shape or a cube. And whenever you shade in a cube in art, you always have to have one side that's lighter than the other. So in this case, our light side is left and the right is the side that's in shadow. And if you were to show three sides of a cube, you have to have one side light, one side medium, and one side a little bit darker. Sometimes it's hard to see, but in, in this picture, it's actually pretty clear that the light is illuminating that front, kind of left side of the house, and that the right side is in shadow. And same thing with the roof. So the roof is going to be obviously a lighter shade of gray. It's still going to have some tone, but it's going to be a lighter shade in that left side. The right side is going to be more in shadow. And I'm giving a little bit of tone to that right side of the house. Even though it's a little bit lighter there, it's not as light as the left side. There's a little shadow from the roof kind of like right below where the eave would be on both sides. So I'm getting that in. Just realize when you're doing the trees and the foliage, which is essentially the leaves, that not every tree is going to be the same value. On the left side, the trees are darker. On the right side, they're a little bit lighter. And you may want to intentionally make one tree a, a different value than the next so you don't have two trees that are exactly the same value just for variety's sake and to also give a sense of depth. I do use a couple of different mark making techniques when I'm doing trees. So there's like the hatch mark to kind of help shape it out and get the value down. And then I do a little dashed or dab type mark to suggest the texture of the leaves which is kind of more important on the trees that are closer to the viewer because that's where you'd see more details up close. But I'm not drawing every single leaf. That would be too much information and too much detail. So I'm generalizing. That's that kind of bush, that a hedgerow that's behind the house. So what I do want you to practice is getting a variety of values. So don't just use one shade of gray, get a whole range of them. The more range that you're able to see and put in your drawing, the more successful it's going to be. And even the lawn has a value. You can see it in the photograph. You can see how brightly lit that front building is or that front side of the building compared to the lawn and in comparison to the trees. And just remember 
with contrast with extreme lights and darks that can help to direct the viewer to your focal point and focal point is like they're the center of the interest like where the eye is drawn to so in this case it's obviously the house There's a little bit of a shadow underneath the stairs. And then there's this funky little apple tree up front. And again, you can kind of see me using those weird marks. So now I'm going to the street and making sure I darkened the street up a little bit. I deliberately made it darker on the right side, a little bit lighter to the left kind of to follow the light pattern there. And I'm even going to give a light tone to the sky. Now, we haven't really been talking about the sky, but the sky does have a tone to it. The blue is not white. It has a value to it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. That way you can leave the cloud shapes white. You can leave those blank. So now I'm just going to do some touch-up work, but essentially the majority of the shading is done. And this is going to act almost like a thumbnail sketch.